I'm Dr. Tanya Harrison, and I am a professional Martian. I've been obsessed with space ever since I was about five years old, thanks to the book, The Magic School Bus Lost in the Solar System, and growing up watching a lot of Star Trek. But it wasn't until the Pathfinder mission landed on Mars when I was 11 that my interest really honed in on the Red Planet. When I saw the Sojourner rover that the mission carried driving on the surface of Mars, I thought, I have to work on Mars rovers. So I'm a scientist, and to me, being a scientist just means being professionally curious. As kids, we're super interested in how the universe works around us, and as scientists, as adults, we're still really interested. We just have fancier tools to play with to answer those questions. I'd say that being extremely proactive is a lot of what led me to where I am in my career. I was constantly seeking out opportunities, mentors to talk to, and just figuring out what I needed to do to chase that dream of going to Mars. I ended up working on missions at the University of Washington, processing data from space telescopes, and that told me that I really knew that I wanted to work on data from missions. I also volunteered at the Pacific Science Center when I was in high school, and I think that really cultivated an interest in science communication because it was really fun to be able to talk to both adults and kids about science all over the Science Center. So right now I work on three main things. One is I'm a scientist on Canada's first lunar rover, which is set to launch no earlier than 2026. The second is as a science consultant, where I work to bring together research and space companies for space exploration. And I also do creative science consulting, so helping people that are creating anything from books to screenplays to video games infuse science into their storytelling so that they can be more scientifically accurate while they do that. And that's always a lot of fun to get to be able to use that creative side of your brain while also being a scientist. For the type of science that I do, it's really important to be a keen observer. So looking at satellite images, whether it's the Earth or the Moon or Mars, you need to learn the personality of the planets that you're looking at. Is there something that's changed since the last time you looked there? Is there something important in this picture that's telling you about the history of that area on the planet or the planet as a whole? And you get the experience from this by just looking at lots and lots of pictures. I hope that scientists show kids that you never have to stop being curious. We are constantly trying to figure out the mysteries of the universe and the context of humans within it. From everything we've seen so far, humans are pretty special in the universe. And so we want to understand this pale blue dot that we live on and everything around us in the rest of the universe as well. In my work, I get excited about the fact that you never know what you're going to see on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's the Earth or the Moon or Mars. So you never get bored. You're constantly exploring. Your brain is always working. And that gets me excited as a scientist. Because you never know what you're going to run into, sometimes you hit obstacles, sometimes you fail, whether that's the rover not functioning properly or a piece of code that you wrote not working quite right. But you learn through those mistakes, you learn through failure, and that's really what science and engineering is all about. You keep experimenting to figure out how to do things, even if you don't necessarily know how to do them at the beginning. We learn through failure. A question that I always get about my work is, would you go to Mars? And while I would love to go and see Mars with my own eyes, I actually really don't like confined spaces, so I don't even fly on airplanes. So I think I'm gonna be one of the humans that stays here on Earth in mission control, helping other humans go and explore Mars. Now I'm going to answer some questions from students that had a recent field trip to Pacific Science Center. Marcus, Adia, and Sage, all in third grade, ask, how long does it take to go to Mars? So right now it takes about six to eight months for missions to get to Mars and we can only launch them once every two years because Mars and Earth have to be in the perfect spots in both of their orbits around the sun to be able to get there the most quickly. Maya in fourth grade asks, what happens if a rover breaks on Mars? Can you fix it? We can't send repair crews to go and fix it like you would if your car breaks down, but we can send fixes to the code in the computers. We have models of the rovers here on Earth to test the fixes on before we send the commands to the rovers on Mars to make sure that those commands are gonna do exactly what we think they're going to do. Daniela in third grade asks, can the robots on Mars talk to each other and do they help each other? So the rovers on Mars don't talk to each other, 
but there are satellites orbiting Mars that talk to the rovers for us here on Earth. So we send the commands to the rovers through the satellites, the rovers do their thing on Mars, and then they send their information back to us here on Earth through those satellites that are in orbit. Asher in fifth grade asks, is it true that if we lived on the moon, we would have to live underground? On Earth, we have a magnetic field that protects us from radiation, but the moon and Mars don't have magnetic fields. And so to protect astronauts from that radiation, scientists are talking about building habitats for them underground in places like caves beneath volcanoes. And so the rock helps protect them from the radiation that's coming from space. If you love space, you don't necessarily have to be a scientist or an engineer. If you can think of any job on the Earth, it's a job that we either have or will need to have in space soon. So there are space companies that have baristas, they have accountants, they have photographers, they have artists. So if you love space, there's probably a way for you to be involved with it. A special thanks to NASA and the Community Anchor Award for funding this project. Thanks so much for joining and remember to stay curious.